Hi guys, Joe here with Ink Halo Inc. And uh, like every video, it's been a while. Uh, I've started a job, so I just don't have the time that I used to. And even when I had that time, I wasn't making videos daily anyways. Uh, but, you know, I just didn't have the time to really work on a video or anything like that. But I found some time, and I'm doing one now. Today, we're going to be d looking over all the shroom cards for set one. We're doing the uh, overview for the shrooms. The shrooms are, besides being a funny name, are disruptive. They are designed to mess with your opponent, like forcing them to discard cards, losing energy, or returning cards to the, from the field back to the hand, stuff like that. Starting off, we have Drilloom. Drilloom is a pretty low statted card, but it's got a really nice ability where you can pay one energy to move it to any available zone. Funny enough, back when there was only like 15 cards, just barely enough to actually play a match, um, Drilloom was a very powerful card. That was back when it had like 45 attack, 25 defense, and some crazy stats. But I've lowered, I had to lower it, and then it was way too weak for once actually good cards came. But I just find that funny. But uh, Drilloom is just a very, I think it's a really good representation of what the shrooms are. It's a very, it's a relatively cheap card with pretty poor stats. All shrooms, and, and same with the flowers, they tend to have lower stats because almost every card has an ability. But um, with Drilloom, you can move it to any open zone or any open lane and just get a free point pretty much every turn. So it's very easy to get points with Drilloom, but he's fragile, so you have to have something in front of it like a meat shield or a or a tankier uh, plant but if you can get those consecutive points per turn the one energy to move it isn't a whole lot moving on we got cap golem one of the best designs uh cap golem is just a bit of a stat card he's got okay stats but yeah he's got a silver boost though again silver boost doubles all stats and cap golem has two fantastic abilities. To start off, your opponent has to discard a card, which isn't the biggest deal, but it's still an, um, a nuisance, you know? But it's but when killed, that's, this is the important ability. When killed, your opponent ha loses two energy. That's big. If done correctly or played correctly and killed at the right time or wrong time for your opponent, your opponent can do nothing the next turn. Then we have Fungal Slug. Fungal Slug has no attack, no defense, but it's designed to die. It's a one cost, so very, very cheap. And when killed, you can pay one energy to return a plant on the field back to the owner's hand, or side deck, if that's where it goes. Uh, Fungal Slug is a very, very good reaction card. You know, your opponent plays something big, you don't like that, you play Fungal Slug for one cost, and you can take care of it pretty quickly. Well, it's a two cost, actually, because you have to pay the one more to take care of it, but you're also blocking and it's attack, so it's all worth it in the end, I think. Especially if you're taking down like a level four or something. Um, Fungal Slug used to be really like way too powerful. It was when played, you would return a card. Then I had to change it to when killed, but even that was still too strong. So that's why you have to pay one more. Jester Grimment. Uh, let's just say that his first design, his leg was a little wonky. I tried to make him all cartoony, you know, like the spindly spindly arms and all that shit, but it just didn't work out. Um, just Agreement is just a very good stat card if you don't play it with its ability. Like all Ents, uh, they're level, they're four cost, but they have very good abilities when another Ent is on the field. Um, Jester Grimant's ability is that he ignores defense, which is incredible. Jester Grimant is an assassin type card. Then we have Stinkhorn, one of my personal favorites. I don't know why, I just love it. Uh, it's kind of a weaker version of Jester Grimm at a cheaper price. Um, he's got pretty much the same ability. You can ignore defense during your turn, um, but you have to pay one energy to do it. Um, but he, you know, he's got less. He's got less stats, but you know, it's a cheaper cost. So if you don't want to, you know, rely on another card being on the field and don't want to have to pay a really large cost, you can just play Stinkhorn instead. Spore Ant is a card that has pretty recently been uh, removed and changed. 
Uh, the ability and all that's all the same. It's just the spore ant itself just didn't look plant like plant enough for me. I like spore ant, like I like the design, but it just doesn't really fit in with the game. Um, so it's been replaced with wart spore, uh, which is, it's kind of weird that the top looks like an egg that was not intentional, but you know it's not the biggest. Yeah, at the end of the world, you know what I mean. Um, and wart spore is one of two spell plant floral plant hybrid creatures um it's a trap plant or a plant trap or however you want to say it basically it's a it's a creature card that you play like a trap uh you can only play it during your opponent's turn um but you know you play it as a trap card and it's a it's a one cost so it's incredibly cheap and it's basically just a free blocker. If your opponent's getting a point, maybe even the winning point, or if you want to protect something, you just play this, block it, done and done. Um, the other uh, plant floral hybrid, which is like a, which is the creature spell hybrid, is Rebus, which is an equip plant, where you equip it and when it attacks, you gain energy. So, uh, a very good blocking card. You never want to play this to like get a point or something like that. I mean, you can, but you always want to play this reacting to something else, a very good reaction card. Then we have Hive Mind. Hive Mind is a very weird, weird fellow. Uh, first of all, his stats, defense and health are very good. Attack, not so much. Uh, let's start with the bottom bit. Uh, if this plant is played by evolution, it gains 60 attack, so it goes to 90 attack. Then it's great. Then Hive Mind's really great. Evolution as a mechanic uh, isn't really that big in the game, but I mean, I wanted it to be originally, but it's not that big of a deal. There are a few cards that interact with it to try to help with evolution, but generally speaking, it's kind of a gimmicky uh, sort of play. Um, but besides that, while, while Hive Mind is on the front line, when any plants on your side of the field were to lose life, take damage, uh, Hive Mind takes that damage instead. Now, now it, it is the damage, so it it doesn't calculate defense or anything. So if a plant takes 15 damage, Hive Mind takes that damage instead. Um, so basically, he's just a very good stalling plant. Spore Wing and Silver Spore Wing are removed cards. Uh, they were, uh, for the last two... Uh, silver boosts for the flowers and shrooms. I didn't know what to do So I was thinking oh, I'll do a butterfly and a moth because I thought that would be really good So I based it off of uh, Batra and Mothra in terms of like the base forms, but I just didn't like it not at all um, So they were removed and I'm glad I did because they were replaced by Zombicite uh, Zombicite is a very interesting card uh, It's a pretty weak stat card but if you can silver boost it, you get a really fun disruptive card. It's got okay stats for a silver boost. And then when played, your opponent must discard a card from their side deck. I think this is the only scenario or like the only card that forces your opponent to discard from the side deck. And then, or well, they get to choose which card is discarded. And then when this plant attacks an enemy plant, it heals 30 health to this plant. Then we have Bloatoad. Bloatoad, honest to God, one of the best cards in the entire game. It is very, very cheap removal. And it's not, not, it's not damage, it's removal. Um, there, is, there is a caveat though. Any damaged plant attacked by this plant is instantly killed. This plant can't attack directly. The attack stat of this plant can't be altered. Basically, all it's saying is that Bloatoad can't get, get you direct points, and it can't be equipped. Or, well, it can still be equipped, but it doesn't do anything when you equip, like, a uh, Banana Sword or something like that. So, as long as the target is damaged, Bloatoad will instantly kill it. Okay? Um, and if it's not damaged, Bloatoad does nothing. Uh, it doesn't matter what defense stat they have, it doesn't matter what how much damage they have, it's just if it's damaged and Bloatoad attacks it, it dies. I don't want to. I don't want you guys to think that I've lost interest in Phytor or anything like that. I'm gonna keep this last bit as short as possible. 
Uh, me and my friend are kind of still spitballing ideas. Me and Devin are sp still spitballing ideas on like how, how to do the digital version. He's kind of got to figure out how like networking works and you know stuff like that. He's dealing with his own projects anyways. So the digital version of Phytora is going to be coming down you know not for a while but uh hopefully it does come because i would really love for as many people to enjoy and play the game as possible um and if you do want to play the game you can go to uh the steam workshop on tabletop simulator and play it for yourself if you have a friend um i think it is a little bit glitchy at the moment for some reason some images aren't showing up correctly i think all the cards are showing up but I think some of the cards in like the uh, old card bag isn't. Uh, I'm I'm in the process of fixing it. Um, I've just been trying to gather all of them, all the broken parts. But blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, that's all I had to say. Hopefully I'll upload a few more videos in you know a pretty decent time frame. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.